To watch German tanks roll down your block one year, and a few years and six million deaths later, Soviet tanks in their wake, must have doomed Zbigniew Herbert to his own brand of bitter wisdom. His family was arrested, an uncle shot, he could only attend high school underground. You get brute facts from Herbert in unvarnished terms, like this. Monday, empty storehouse. A rat became the unit of currency. Herbert sometimes speaks through a clown-faced doppelganger called Mr. Kogito, whose lofty beginnings in Schopenhauer's Kogito Ergo Sum speak to his need for reason and certainty in the crazed chaos of the invader. But Cogito's rationalism is countered by his touching humility, his fool's capacity for awe. Seeking balance and meaning in chaos, Herbert makes slapstick for intellectuals and philosophy for boneheads. And Mr. Cogito reflects on suffering. He calls for an impossible stoicism. Don't brandish your stump over people's heads. Don't knock your white cane on the pains of the well-fed. Poland was constantly invaded, obliterated for maps for centuries. Its barbaric language was once even banned and replaced by Latin. Facts that perhaps made Polishness a quality that that country's poets sought. I heard an anecdote about Herbert's fallout with Czesław Milos beginning when Herbert made a crack that Milos's passport wasn't Polish. The evening ended with broken chairs. Milos and that other Nobel laureate, Zimborska, briefly embraced communism and joined the Writers' Union, and thus were able to publish in Poland. Herbert was never a believer. He refused to cooperate and lived in relative obscurity, the life of a clerk. Milos emigrated to Paris, then, Ber then uh, Berkeley. The Nobel Prizes that he and Zimborska won, I always thought belonged to Herbert, though I'm reading in translation, so. Herbert could never abandon Poland. He claims his decision to resist tyranny there was an aesthetic as much as a political decision. He was an esthete, a poet's poet. In the power of taste, he shrugs off any accusations of bravery on his part. That poem ends, it did not take any great character. We had a scrap of the necessary courage. But in essence, it was a matter of taste. Yes, taste, which tells you to walk out, wince, spit out your scorn, even if for that your body's precious capital, the head, would roll. So when I tell my students, you have to risk something in poetry, I don't just mean unconventional line breaks. This idea of beauty saving you made him a devoted pilgrim in the Western intellectual tradition. Like Henri Michaud or Constantin Kabafi, he's a mythic poet who can make the marble statue breathe. He traveled widely and worshiped everywhere at beauty's altar. But he could never abandon the very country that imprisoned him. And one of my favorite stories, which I think demonstrates bravery on a scale I'm not sure I could handle, He's being interviewed for a job in California that would have made his hard life immediately easy. But the dean interviewing him told a Polish joke. His response, my English is not very good. I don't want to misspeak. I think you are very stupid. <laughs> I leave you with my favorite Zbigniew Herbert poem, The Envoy of Mr. Kogito which calls us all to be brave enough to follow the hard path of beauty. I love this poem so much, I have it on the wall of my apartment. Go where those others went to the dark boundary for the golden fleece of nothingness, your last prize. Go upright among those who are on their knees, those with their backs turned, those toppled in the dust. You were saved not in order to live. You have little time. You must give testimony. Be courageous when the mind deceives you. Be courageous. In the final account, only this is important. And let your helpless anger be like the sea when you hear the voice of the insulted and beaten. 
May your sister's scorn not leave you. The informers, executioners, cowards, they will win. They will go to your funeral and with relief throw a lump of earth. The wood borer will write your smoothed over biography. And do not forgive, truly it is not in your power to forgive in the name of those betrayed at dawn. Beware, however, of unnecessary pride. Keep looking at your clown's face in the mirror. Repeat, I was called, weren't there better ones than I? Beware of dryness of the heart, love, the morning spring, the bird with the unknown name, the winter oak, the light on the wall, the splendor of the sky. They don't need your warm breath. They are there to say, no one will comfort you. Oh my God. do it from heart, I think, it's, but forgive me for when I make a mistake. No, I'm not going to make a mistake. There it is. Stay alert when the light on a hill gives a sign, rise and go, so long as the slow blood turns the dark star in your breast. Repeat humanity's old incantations, fairy tales and legends, for this is how you will attain the good you will not attain. Repeat great words, repeat them stubbornly like those who crossed the desert and perished in sand. For they will, will reward you with what you have at hand, with the whip of laughter, with murder on a garbage heap. Go, for only in this way will you be admitted to the company of cold skulls, to the company of your ancestors, Gilgamesh, Hector, Roland, the defender of the kingdom without limits and the city of ashes. Be faithful. Go.